How's it gaming? I'm filling the blanks and welcome to Tetris. It is really hard to believe that this year, 2024, marks the 40th anniversary of quite possibly the most well-known video game ever made, Tetris, made in 1984 by Alexei Pajitnov in Russia. And uh, this is specifically the first version of Tetris, the earliest known kind of version of Tetris on a Russian government computer called the Electronica 60. Now, last year I went to Russia and I took one of these machines from a government building and the KGB tried to stop me and it was a really cool car chase and action scene. I looked really great in the entire thing. You know, it looked great. No, of course not. Uh, this is, ah, damn. Well, still gotta be able to get a Tetris, thankfully. Uh, this is an emulated version I found online on uh, itch.io and it, it expertly recreates the look and feel and even like sounds of the Electronica 60. I thought it was very, very cool. And I figured for, what, what can I get a line piece, please? I uh, figured for uh, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Tetris, we could, thank you. Yeah, Tetris, yay! It's the only thing I've done so far. Uh, we'd play a few versions of Tetris. Now this episode specifically, we are gonna go through a few versions of Tetris in chronological order, and they're all gonna be uh, very basic versions of Tetris that introduced like firsts for Tetris. So for example, this one is obviously the first version of Tetris just in general. And uh, we will continue on. Now this kind of, um, kind of, I thought of this when I learned that this was the 40th anniversary of Tetris because I had no idea, I'll be really honest. Uh, it wasn't until they announced the Tetris Forever video game, which is a like celebration of Tetris's 40 years, uh, specifically uh, Bulletproof Software's version of Tetris, which is one of the many companies that have licensed Tetris throughout the years. Uh, and it, it, pretty much every game on that collection is Bulletproof Software. Uh, they even have, I guess, a, a remake of, of this version in like kind of like a weird time warp mode. I don't know, it's not out yet. By the time this comes out, it's pro probably still not going to be out yet. Um, but it comes out very, very soon. And it was, that was, a, I was like, that's a really cool idea. I'll, I'll play a lot of Tetris and we'll see how that goes and see how fun that'll be. Because I, I just, I really like Tetris. And we played uh, the magical, uh, Mickey's magical Tetris this year randomly for Disney Month. So I thought it'd be kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, this is, like I said, the original Tetris. It's fairly simple, as you can see. I didn't put it on very difficult mode. I don't know if I can, like, make it faster, but it doesn't really matter. We took a look at this one and, uh, let us, well, I'll die on purpose, I guess. Boop, 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 Aw. Oh, I don't know what that says. Probably restart or something like that. Game over? I don't know. But, uh, let's move on to the next version of Tetris. And this is the Spectrum Holobyte version of Tetris. Clearly emulated, we're getting a little uh, history lesson at the bottom of the screen there that clearly would not be in the actual version of the game. But, like, of course I'm emulating this because I can't even imagine how expensive it would be and hard it would be to get an actual original diskette <laughs> of, the, of the Russian DOS port of Tetris. It would be ridiculous. Uh, but what makes this version of Tetris so special is that uh, first of all, it's it's steeped in Russian iconography, as you can kind of tell. Even all the levels have a bunch of stuff like right there. You press up to see all the backgrounds too. They look, some of them look pretty cool. Weirdly enough, this version is the original, original first version, but the later versions would have a lot of the Russian stuff and uh, war stuff like the submarines there taken out at the request of Pajitnov himself because he kind of wanted to uh, not have that kind of war-looking stuff going on. But yeah, the, the reason why this is a kind of an important version of Tetris, though, is that this is the... God, this goes fast. This is the first commercially available version of Tetris uh, made by Spectrum Holobyte, which was a sister company, a sister company to... Mirrorsoft. Sorry, this is hard to do while I'm concentrating because it's really fast. Now, there's a whole story about them getting the rights to Tetris, the first company to attempt to get the rights to Tetris. Um, and they made a movie for Apple TV, and I watched it very recently, like, for this kind of Let's Play. Uh, and, oh, well, I'm dead. <laughs> Let's let it go. 
uh, it, it's a really good movie. Now, obviously, it's it's a uh, you know Hollywood. It, it's got action sequence and political thriller feel to it. That's not in the original like story of Tetris, but a, a surprising amount of it is actually very accurate. Um, but the whole story behind Mirrorsoft and whatnot is actually a really interesting one uh, that ended with the company basically going bankrupt and the CEO um, basically uh, mysteriously dying. <laughs> so it's it's an interesting watch, uh, but that's what makes this one specifically so special is because it is the first like sellable, purchasable, commercially available version of Tetris, which is very, very cool. I want to see if I can get at least one Tetris here. I don't think so. Probably not. No, probably not. I'm going to need three lion pieces at this point. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's two. Tetris, uh, the old Tetris do not follow the kind of rule that it cycles through all seven of the pieces or like two sets of seven. You no, know, it, it could be like the same piece over and over and over again, which would be really frustrating. Come on, I just need I just need one line piece. One line piece. Come on, man. Slide that in. No. Line piece. Line piece. Yay! Alright, let's move on to the next Tetris. A more uh recognizable version of Tetris that I think everyone watching this has probably played. And this is Game Boy Tetris, made by Bulletproof Software. And uh, I think this might be the first version of Tetris made by Bulletproof. Not 100% sure on that, but I would not be surprised if this was the most recognizable and iconic version of Tetris. Uh, it certainly is the one that launched Tetris worldwide to great fame and, and notoriety, and also helped make the Game Boy just a household name, because it launched with the Game Boy as a back-end. Uh, and, and yeah, let's just jump in there. There's the, oh, there's the wonderful Tetris theme. It's actually a Russian folk song. I think most people know that. It's called like the Kolobo Yoniki or something like that. I don't know the actual pronunciation of it at all because I'm dumb in English. Uh, we have the A type, which is the endless mode, and B type is the uh, countdown to 25 lines, which is what I'm going to try to do because it actually has an ending. And uh, music wise, we're going to keep obviously the Tetris theme, but B type is actually my favorite. I like this one a lot. And C type, well, C type's not. Very exciting for Tetris, so 8 of it is. And uh, we're going to start at level 9. And, uh, uh, yeah, level 9 speed and height of 5. Which makes it very, very, very difficult at the beginning. So this version of the game already starts with stuff on the screen, because we kind of set a height to it. And the goal is to just get to 25 lines. Doesn't matter how, doesn't need to be pretty, doesn't need to look good, doesn't need to be Tetris's. Just needs to be something. Ugh. And it's already really difficult because of that kind of randomness. Plus, it's already really fast, and uh, things stick really quickly in uh, the old Game Boy version of the NES, or the uh, Tet of Tetris. Sorry, brain going, because Tetris happening now. <laughs> uh, so it's just really difficult because they stick so quickly. Not bad. We're doing okay. We're getting away from the top of the screen, which is always really helpful. Gives us a little, a little bit more time. Ooh, nice. Okay, this is good. Very nice. Sorry, talking is hard now. Getting there. Getting there. Oh, I could have used that line next would be much better, but that's okay. Oh, there we go. Get you all the way down there. Nice. Oh, yes. Helpful. Oh boy. Ten more to go. Not great right here, that's fine. We'll be able to go right here and do that. Hurts a go and actually I'm actually a little surprised how much this is kind of getting my adrenaline going. <laughs> Don't give me so many blocks. That's fine. Get something right here. Which will get me something right here. Three more, and you know what? That line piece is perfect. We might actually make this. 
I'm not doing a soft drop at all. I'm not pressing down at all. I'm too scared to do it. Now, uh, this is the... Uh, sorry, talking so hard now. Um, the older Tetris games by Bullet uh, Proof Software didn't have a hard drop. Oh, we did it. I didn't even notice. Ooh, we did it. We technically beat Tetris. <laughs> uh, but yeah, by pressing up on a lot of the modern Tetris games, you just get a piece to fall straight down. Didn't exist in this one, and that's weird to me, because uh, I'm so used to playing with that. But there we go, with the classic spaceship going into space kind of ending for a game, or for, for a Tetris game, which is super, super weird, but I don't know. Russia was all about the space race back in the day, so yay! And that, my friends, was Game Boy Tetris. Very cool. And now we're going to go on to uh, the next one, which is very similar to the Game Boy version of Tetris. We'll just wait till this end happens, I guess. Fun to watch. Not every day you get an ending to Tetris, so... Congratulations! Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And then all my stuff. And that doesn't bring you back to play. It brings you back to the menu, so, you know, it's like a, a score... kind of... Like, like, try to get a best score sort of thing. So there we go. All right, that was Game Boy Tetris. On to the next one. And this, I think, is the other extremely well-known version of Tetris. It is Tetris for the NES, and it is extremely, extremely similar to the Game Boy version of Tetris. Has the Type A and Type B. Has different music, though. Uh, it does not have the classic Tetris theme. Uh, now, this is the one I grew up with, so whenever anyone talked about the Tetris theme, I actually thought about, thought about these three songs instead. We got the, uh, what was it, the Sugar Plum Fairy song, which is interesting to use for this. Uh, then you got Music 2, which I'm always like, that's the bouncy one. And uh, for some reason, Music 3 I've always really liked. I love the sound font they use. It's just really, really nice for that. Very, very cool. Uh, so originally, I was going to do what we did for the Game Boy version of Tetris and play on B-Type and go on the hardest level on the highest uh, difficulty and uh, see the, the the big ending for this. Because uh, there is a really, really neat ending with a, with a cool Easter egg, which I wanted to show you. But this is so much more difficult than the... Uh, than the Game Boy one, because you have so little time to move anything. It's just so hard. Oh my god, yeah, you have like so few frames to move anything that people have developed different techniques on holding the controller so that they can actually move things in time. It's just crazy. Like, they hold it upside down, they do this, like, piano hold, like, tapping kind of thing. This is also a very competitive version of Tetris. Um, they use modified versions of it to go even faster than this for actual tournament. I can't even get it to the left friggin' wall. So that's, that's nuts. So I, I was like, I wanted to show you guys the ending, but I'm not gonna be able to, at least not this way. So let's back out a little bit of A-type. We'll start at, like, level five, because we don't want this good for too long for this one version of Tetris while we talk. But yeah, um, there are three versions of Tetris for the NES, if you count the uh, Japanese Nintendo, the Famicom. Uh, there is this version, which was made in-house by Nintendo. And uh, there was also the Bulletproof Software version, which I'm surprised we never got here, uh, considering the Game Boy version is Bulletproof Software as well. Uh, I don't know why Nintendo was like, nope, we want to make this next one ourselves, no clue why. But they got the Bulletproof Software version as well. And there was also the... Uh, one by Atari under their kind of secondary label called Tengen, which was made so that they could publish uh, unlicensed games for the uh, for the NES because they kind of went through the like security features of the NES and were able to figure out how to run games on it. And there's this whole legal battle, and uh, I think Atari lost. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Nintendo won a lot of lawsuits back in the day. They still kind of do. <laughs> They're very litigious. Um, yeah, level five is actually pretty easy. So I don't want to go too, too long with this, but one of the fun things about this version of Tetris that I always liked when I was a kid anyways, was that every time you go, like, up a level or up ten lines or something like that, you get a different color, which I always thought was really neat. Now, we won't go up a uh, color on this one simply because we're, um, we're, like, level five, so I think you need to get to level 50 before the next color kind of kicks in. But this was the one I grew up with. This is the one that we had growing up, so I played this one a lot. So I'm, I'm definitely more used to this one than a few others on this list that we've been playing. But it is also very simple. It doesn't have a hard drop. 
uh, there's no holding pieces, that wouldn't come around for a while. We're actually gonna see the origins of that one in this video, of which game started that. This was, this isn't really a first, like, neither was the Game Boy. I think the, my whole thing was that each one is like a first kind of thing, but I, I'm already breaking that. The Game Boy was like the first truly popular home, home version of the game, I guess. This one's really just, I don't know, the first one made by Nintendo. I don't know. It's just because it's so iconic, in my opinion. So, definitely fun. So what I'm gonna do before we jump into the next version of Tetris, uh, I'm gonna die, because that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to cheat off screen so that we can see the ending to the hardest mode of this version of Tetris, because that ending is really, really neat. Uh, but if, it, again, most of you probably already know it if you keep up with like dumb little trivia things on uh, on video games online that you probably already know it. Actually, let's get a Tetris first. Gotta, gotta get Tetris, there we go. Pretty much guaranteed once we get a lion piece. I love the music though, I always like this song. There we go, Tetris. Woo, they make such a big deal out of it. All right, and down we go. Let's check out that ending for uh, Type B, Speed 9, Height 5. Oh my god, there we go. Even with, like, saves coming <laughs> on the simulator, I still had trouble doing that. It was so difficult. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Look at that. You got, you got, I think that's Peach. You got Mara and Luigi doing a little dance. You got freaking Samus with the cello and Link down there. Oh my gosh. This is, like, nowadays everyone kind of knows about this ending screen, but anyone who got this back in the, in the 90s would have been a Tetris god. This is just a neat little, little thing. I just wanted to really, really want to show it off, but my own skill was not going to get us there, so I apologize for the cheating here. But, uh, yeah, all right. Time for the next version of Tetris. And this is the first CD-based Tetris game. This is Tetris for the Philips CDI. A notoriously awful console uh, with very few truly good games. We've actually played a game on the channel uh, from the Philips CDI library. We played Hotel Mario as an April Fool's Day joke. But this Tetris is actually not bad. Uh, and it's mostly well known for its incredible soundtrack. It is smooth and relaxing. And it's now become kind of known on the internet. Um, it, like in like 2016 or 17, it started getting really popular through the music itself. And... Uh, I guess uh, the actual composer has commented on some of the videos being like, oh, I really appreciate you uh, listening to my stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, dude, absolutely. This stuff is so good. Uh, it's a very bare, bare bones version of Tetris, as you can see. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's, I mean, it's cheesy 90s, like mid 90s, but like, I like it. Let's just jump in there. And it's also really good because of the background. You'll see what I mean when we get in there. Level zero. Look at this. That's so good. I really, really like the way this game looks. Um, it plays pretty okay. Um, I've definitely played better versions of Tetris than this. Uh, it's got a little bit of jank. Uh, you can also use your mouse. Like right now, I'm using the mouse, which is weird. Back to controller. Because I do not like the way that feels at all. Uh, but it's it's not bad. It functions. There's no sound effects, which I think is really, really weird. But, I mean, whatever. Not a big deal. And uh, it changes... <clears throat> the uh, the area kind of changes every 10 lines. Um, I'm greedy, of course. I'm always going for Tetrises because that's just how I play Tetris. I mean, most people kind of play like that. Oh, don't be stingy with the, the line pieces, though, man. Don't do that to me. Wow, we're already going really high up here. Really? Come on, man. Do I not have a single line piece in my name here? Are we going to get through this without a single line? I'm just going to die right away. That's what it feels like right now. There we go. Jeez. Reward me with another line piece, please. I'm just going to have to take it like that. Jeez, my goodness. There we go. All right, level two. <laughs> or level one. Yeah, it's just a little zero. That's so weird. Ugh. Yeah, no, this is a fairly relaxing version of the game. I like it a lot. Uh, actually, while we're here, might as well talk about the other stuff I'm planning for uh, to celebrate Tetris. So other than this episode, which we're doing, you know, a few versions of Tetris, uh, I think the total Tetris count we're doing is, is seven for this episode. 
Uh, but we're also doing a few episodes, more more lengthy, uh, quickie episodes, where we're actually going through a a, a game of Tetris. Um, but those will, like, while these ones are very, as you can tell, they're very similar to each other, they're very Tetris, uh, the other ones are going to be closer to, like, a game that, that tries to do something very different with Tetris. Because uh, I think that's, a, that's important, too, is seeing the games in the series that try to do something really different, radically different. Uh, so some of those games uh, will be presented in, in, a, in a quickie or two. We'll be basically doing about six games. Uh, so seven quickies in total, this one counting as one, I guess. There you go, that's, that's some fun music. Love it. Very, very cool. Uh, so very various different Tetrises. Now I want to make uh, it clear of which Tetris are not going to be there, because that's a little, unfortunately a little disappointing to some people probably, but uh, like Tetris Attack will not be there, because that's, one, not actually a Tetris game. Uh, it's paneled upon, but... Uh, it was kind of reconfabulated into a Tetris game for North America. And that's a really fun game and totally deserves to be its own thing, not tagged on to Tetris Week. Uh, Tetris DS, which is my personal favorite version of Tetris, also won't be covered because that could be an entire Let's Play. That game is huge. Uh, what other? There's like another one or two that won't be featured that's like really big. doesn't really matter. But basically the idea is that it's Tetris, but like trying to do something different, but it's still Tetris at its core. So, uh, all right, we've done enough, I think, of this Tetris game. It was a lot of fun, though, to just relax and, and hear some really good music. And those backgrounds are really cool. Like, I love how even the playing field is on a monolith, and it's it's actually interacting a little bit with the background. Like, it's, it's buried in the sand right here. I think that's a really neat idea. They didn't have to go that far with that concept, but they did. Uh, it's very, very cool. Well, let's look at the next level, and we'll call it a day for this specific version of Tetris. We'll move on. One more line. And there. Not a good line. This is not a good setup. Oh, didn't go to the next one level. At, uh, 40 lines. I wonder why. 41 lines? There we go. Level 4. <sighs> That's neat. Like, look at these, like, shots. I love the FMV feel of this game. This is easily one of, like, the better games for the CDI. Very impressed. Thank you, Philip CDI, for showing us something really quite good. I appreciate that. Alright, with that game over, we'll hear the amazing high score music. But yeah, go online and check out the soundtrack of this game. Very, very cool. But onward to the next Tetris. And this is the new Tetris for the N64. Strange name, very strange name. But among the Tetris elites, uh, apparently this is considered one of the best ones. And it's pretty cool. Uh, it's It's... Definitely a modern take on Tetris compared to what we've seen so far. I don't know why I went to the options so people for me to see. There are things called wonders that are like unlockable things that you need a specific amount. Of Look at this line. You need 500,000 lines to get whatever the Russian thing is. But like you build like things with lines basically. Like you get pieces and it builds like a Mayan structure and a Greek structure and an Egyptian structure. And the entire kind of motif to this game is like... Uh, wonders of the world uh, architecture kind of thing. It's very, very unique. Uh, let's just jump in there. Oh, my name. Guest. You can actually... Oh, there we go. Phil, I'm already in there. Uh, and you can set it to no opponent where you just play by yourself. Or you can play against someone else. which is really cool. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of difficulty levels. Just play off. And marathon is just the play forever sort of thing. Sprint is, I think you have three minutes to do as much as you can, and Ultra is something else. But we'll do Sprint, that will it'll, that way it'll give us a little bit of a time limit. But here we go. This is a very odd soundtrack. Uh, the backgrounds are looking kind of wonky. I am unfortunately emulating this. I do not have a copy of this game. Uh, but I will say, I'm impressed with the kind of graphics of this game. Um, there's something about it that looks really, really good for the N64. Uh, it has a very unique style to it. The lighting on the blocks end up looking pretty good as it starts kind of piling together. I love how the the individual squares of each 
Tetramino disappears when it's landed. Oh, I love that. Speaking of that, by the way, so when I was a kid, I always thought that it was pronounced Tetromino, because like, you know, dominoes, but apparently it's Tetramino, and I had no idea. So that's a little bit of a random fact. So the reason why we're playing this one on uh, this little smorgasbord of Tetrises is because this is the first Tetris with the ability to hold a piece, something that to this day is still very divisive amongst some Tetris player players. It's not to me. I love the idea of holding onto a piece. I think it's a really neat idea. It, it evokes a little bit of strategy and a little bit of the uh, like kind of an ability to like bail yourself out a little bit. So I think it's kind of neat. It's like I can just press L and there we go. You actually start with a banked piece right off the bat, which is a little weird. And you can switch it once per piece. You can't just do it infinitely. That'd be ridiculous. But it's still pretty cool. I think it's neat. It's like, oh, here we go. We can use this uh, line piece later. I'm going to use it right now, mind you. But that's a way some people just kind of do this. I, I like the whole, oh, the whole piece. I think it's a really interesting idea. And I was very surprised that, that it wasn't until an N64 game where it was introduced. I'm very, actually, very surprised about that. Um, do this. Let's get ourselves a Tetris. We have a minute left. Wow, that goes fast when you're not really doing much. We only got 10 lines. Here we go. We got back to back Tetris. Oh, I love that look. Very cool, very cool. But yeah, no, like I said, this game has a very, very cool style that I'm, I appreciate a lot. It's very unique. There are, I believe, th three Tetris games for the N64. At least three. There's this one. There's um, the Magical Tetris game, or whatever it's called. That was the Mickey Mouse one. We played the Game Boy Color version of it on the channel this year. There's also Tetrisphere, which is a very, very different take on Tetris that maybe we'll see during Tetris week. But yeah, no. This is the closest thing to, like, a new yet classic take on Tetris, and I very much appreciate it. It, Like I said, it plays pretty well. I have nothing to do. Um, I'm gonna put it right there, can I? Well, that was dumb of me. Or right here. Whatever. Being dumb, I'm not a good Tetris player. Uh... It's got a lot of the modern stuff, like like something called kickback, where if you're against the wall and you move, it'll kick you away from the wall. And, ooh, I win. And uh, a lot of the older touches didn't do that. If you were against the wall, it you'd have to take the piece away from the wall to move it, which is dumb. Only 23 lines is really bad. I mean, the whole point was to get lines, not specifically, you know, Tetris is what I was trying to get. What is Ultra? I just want to see what Ultra is. Oh, okay. I have no idea. Oh, I did that. That was stupid of me. Not paying attention. Look at the clock. It's not a clock winding down, but... Oh, well, we've kind of seen this game. It's a very uh, traditional Tetris with new, unique features that, you know, are commonplace now. The other thing is the shadow block, which I adore. I love seeing the shadow piece down there, so I know exactly where my piece is going to go. Very, very cool. With that, let us move on to the last Tetris game of today. Woo! And this is the last game we'll take a look at today. This is Tetris the Grand Master, which is uh, an ominous sounding name for a Tetris game, and good, it should strike you with fear. This is uh, one of three games, soon to be four, I guess they just announced they're, gonna, they're making a fourth one. Uh, this is the first of a series called the Grandmaster series, and they are absolutely brutal versions of Tetris. Let's go in and see how long I last, which will be a minute or so. It is bare bones looking, but this is made for people who know what they're doing. You are scored on everything and given a rank by the end. Um... Now, you can't hold pieces or anything like that, I don't think, if there is a way the little little control guide at the beginning of the game doesn't tell you, so. Um, I'm already, like, nervous. Uh, it doesn't seem that hard. And it, it, at first, I guess it's not. But uh, in order to get, like, the Grandmaster grade, you need to have gotten, uh, I think, like, 999 pieces down within 
a certain time limit and enough of those like a percentage of those need to be tetrises and you need to do enough like t spins which are like techniques you can do with the t block that i don't really do very well it's pretty crazy uh, and if you do back like right now i'm screwed this is such a bad piece for me uh but uh back to back tetrises are really good and this one's out of the three of them i feel like is the easiest I don't know, They're, it's a pretty crazy series. I've seen people get like the Grandmaster rank on like the, the last one. And after you've like done it, it's like you've beaten the game. And then all of a sudden the, 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 the board that you've been putting pieces down turns invisible and plays the credits over it while you're still playing. I'm like, oh, that was so dumb, man. Uh, it's, it's crazy. I'm not doing this game justice at all, which is a huge shame, of course. Um, I highly recommend you look up a really skilled player online playing this, because it is it is something to watch. It is crazy. Like, I'm not at all good. Like, so far this is actually too bad. I, like, played it up, didn't I? But don't worry, it does get... Oh, it's already starting to get... Ooh, now it's getting faster, okay. Ah, ooh, okay. Oh, no, the wrong way. Oh, I'm so bad at this. It's stupid of me to always go for those Tetrises. You can move around uh, uh, when you land on the uh, on the ground, which is something that, again, is a little dis divisive on old school Tetris fans, but it's it's something to really help when it gets like this fast. So at this point, I'm just letting the pieces fall. I'm not pressing down on anything because I'm too scared to. We're at rank five or grade five or whatever you want to call it. So hey, look at me go. Could be doing a lot worse. I guess I have no idea. Feeling okay. Okay. Woo! That was close. But yeah, question of the day, which should be an obvious... Oh my god. An obvious one considering what we're doing today. What is your favorite version of Tetris out there? Is there one that you grew up with that you really liked? Or are you partial to just one that you found as you grew up? Tell me. I am definitely interested in those types of things from you guys. Please tell me. Oh my god, it's so fast now. And I noticed some people this is like absolutely nothing for them. This is a lot for me. <laughs> Definitely a lot for me. Oh, I always I always go counterclockwise when I show clockwise or that kind of thing. Oh yeah, I messed up. I'm probably done now. That's okay. We had fun. That's a shame. I didn't get to show you like how hard this can get because it gets just bonkers. The new ones also have different modes too, which you're not seeing here, which start off at like the hardest difficulty and like go just nuts. Ooh, oh, I want to slide it in there. Damn. Ah, oh, there we go. Lots of four whole minutes. Rank five, that's not very good. But this was just a little smorgasbord of all the, like uh, not all, but uh, a few of the Tetris games out there. We looked at seven. There are well over 200 Tetris games out there, so kind of impossible to look at them all and, like, talk and play them and whatnot, but... Oh, wow, the woo-wooing is still going. Probably because I made it in the song Mame, and it's not 100%, but... All right, with that, guys, that was a bunch of Tetris games. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you guys look forward to uh, the upcoming Tetris Week, where we kind of dive into uh, specific games of Tetris a little bit uh, a little bit further than we, we deal with these ones. With that, I'm Fumble Blanks. See you next level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.